Welcome to Anime Lore Unveiled, where we dive headfirst into the vibrant and enigmatic worlds of your favorite anime series. Today, we will be venturing into the dark and mysterious realm of Goblin Slayer, a series renowned for its rich lore and engaging narratives. One of the most intriguing aspects of this universe is the enigmatic process of goblin reproduction. It is a topic that has sparked countless debates and theories among fans, and today, we aim to delve deep into this mystery. We will be examining various theories surrounding goblin reproduction, from the grim prospect of reproduction through kidnapping, to the fascinating idea of asexual reproduction, and even the mystical concept of reproduction through magic. We will be cross-referencing these theories with other fantasy works, real-world biology, and of course the lore of Goblin Slayer itself. So sit back, relax, and prepare to dive into the captivating world of Goblin Biology as we unravel the mystery together. Grab your adventurer's gear and let's get started. Have you ever wondered how goblins in the Goblin Slayer series reproduce? A question that may have crossed your mind as you delve deeper into the world of Goblin Slayer. Understanding the goblin reproduction process is key to fully grasping the intricacies of this complex and engaging universe. Goblin reproduction in the Goblin Slayer series is shrouded in mystery, with the author subtly hinting at various methods, but never explicitly revealing the truth. This enigma has sparked numerous debates and theories within the fandom, with everyone trying to piece together the puzzle of goblin biology. One of the main theories we'll be exploring is centered around the idea that goblins reproduce through kidnapping, a grim and unsettling prospect. This theory is primarily based on the goblins' notorious behavior of abducting women from nearby villages, a recurring theme throughout the series. Another theory that we'll delve into posits that goblins reproduce asexually, a concept that finds its roots in many mythologies and folklore around the world. This theory suggests that goblins, like certain species of lizards and insects, can produce offspring without the need for a mate. Lastly, we'll touch on the theory that goblins reproduce through magic, a fitting idea considering the high fantasy setting of Goblin Slayer. This theory proposes that goblins are created or summoned through dark magic, adding an extra layer of mystical intrigue to these creatures. Each of these theories brings its own unique perspective to the table, and throughout this video, We'll be examining the evidence for and against each one. We'll delve into the lore of Goblin Slayer, cross-referencing with other fantasy works and real-world biology, to provide a comprehensive and engaging discussion. So, whether you're a seasoned Goblin Slayer veteran or a newcomer to the series, there's sure to be something for you in this deep dive into the world of Goblin reproduction. Dive into the fascinating world of Goblin biology and let's unravel the mystery together. The first theory suggests that goblins reproduce through kidnapping. In the Goblin Slayer universe, one of the most prevalent theories about goblin reproduction is that they reproduce through kidnapping. This theory is supported by numerous instances in the series where goblins kidnap women from nearby villages. While the series doesn't explicitly detail what happens after these kidnappings, the implication is clear, and it's a dark and disturbing aspect of the goblin race. Another compelling piece of evidence for this theory is the existence of half-goblins in the series. Half-goblins are, as the name suggests, half-goblin and half-human hybrids. Their existence strongly suggests that goblins are capable of reproducing with humans, lending credence to the kidnapping theory. It's a chilling thought, but it's one that fits with the monstrous, cruel nature of goblins as portrayed in the series. If this theory holds true, it has some serious implications. For starters, it means that the goblin population could potentially grow at an alarming rate, as every kidnapped woman could potentially result in the birth of more goblins. This also means that the goblin strategy of raiding villages isn't just about stealing and causing chaos, but also about ensuring the survival and expansion of their species. This theory also implies a deep level of cunning and strategy on the part of the goblins. They're not just mindless monsters, but creatures with a plan and a terrifyingly effective method of reproduction. This adds a whole new layer of complexity to these creatures, making them even more menacing adversaries for our heroes. To sum up, the idea that goblins reproduce through kidnapping is more than just a theory. There's a lot of evidence in the series that supports this idea, and it paints a grim picture of the goblin race and their reproductive methods. It's a dark and unsettling aspect of the Goblin Slayer universe, but it's one that adds depth and intrigue to the story. Although this theory is widely accepted, 
It's not the only one. Let's move on to the next one. Another theory suggests that goblins reproduce asexually. Now, this is an interesting proposition, isn't it? You might wonder how that's even possible, but let's delve into it. This theory hinges on the observation of the rapid growth of goblin populations. Their numbers seem to increase exponentially, and this growth is hard to explain through traditional reproduction, especially given the harsh environments they often inhabit. In nature, we see examples of a sexual reproduction in various organisms, where one parent produces offspring without the involvement of another. Could this be the case with goblins? Could each goblin spawn more of its kind without the need for a partner? This could potentially explain the swift increase in their numbers. But what does this mean for goblin society? If the goblins reproduce asexually, it would mean that each goblin is essentially a clone of the parent, sharing the exact genetic makeup. This might explain the uniformity we observe in their behaviors and their unyielding aggressive nature. It could also mean that goblins don't have the concept of family or kinship, as we understand it. However, it's important to note that asexual reproduction also has its drawbacks. It doesn't allow for genetic variation, which is crucial for adaptation and survival in changing environments. But the goblins seem to thrive despite this, which could suggest they have some other means of adaptation at their disposal. This theory also raises questions about the goblins' lifespan. If they reproduce so quickly, do they also age and die at a faster rate? Or do they have an unusually long lifespan, allowing for the constant growth of their population? As fascinating as this theory is, it does raise as many questions as it answers. It offers a different perspective on goblin biology, forcing us to rethink what we thought we knew about these creatures. However, it's not the only theory out there. This theory offers a different perspective on goblin biology, but there's one more theory to discuss. The final theory suggests that goblins reproduce through magic. Let's navigate through this possibility, shall we? This theory derives its strength from the fact that the Goblin Slayer universe is teeming with magical creatures and instances of magical phenomenon. In such a world, is it really far-fetched to imagine that goblins, these loathsome creatures, could reproduce through magical means? Now you might be wondering, have goblins ever demonstrated magical abilities? Well, the answer is a resounding yes. We've witnessed goblins using magic in combat, showing us that they do possess some understanding of the arcane arts, and if they can wield magic in battle, who's to say they couldn't use it to reproduce? Imagine a scenario where a goblin, or perhaps a goblin shaman, uses a spell or ritual to create more of their kind. This could explain why goblins are able to increase their numbers so rapidly, and why they seem to appear out of nowhere. It could also explain why goblins are all male if they're created through magic, they wouldn't need to adhere to the rules of biological reproduction. The implications of this theory are significant. If goblins reproduce through magic, it could change the way we understand them. They would no longer be simple creatures driven by basic instincts, but rather beings capable of using complex magic. This would add a new dimension to their character and make them even more formidable enemies for the goblin slayer. However, this theory is not without its challenges. Magic in the Goblin Slayer universe is typically depicted as a powerful and rare ability, not something that every goblin could potentially possess. Furthermore, there's no direct evidence of goblins using magic to reproduce. It's a theory based more on inference and speculation than solid proof. This theory adds a layer of complexity to the goblin reproduction process. But which theory is the most plausible? We've explored three theories about goblin reproduction in the Goblin Slayer series. Let's take a moment to recap what we've learned. First, we delved into the unsettling theory that goblins reproduce through kidnapping. This theory, while disturbing, is supported by numerous instances in the series where goblins are seen abducting humans for unknown purposes. However, it falls short in explaining how goblins could sustain such a high population growth rate, given the risk involved in these kidnapping missions. Next, we looked at the possibility of goblins reproducing asexually. This theory, while biologically plausible for some creatures seems less likely for goblins. Despite being creatures of fantasy, goblins in the series exhibit characteristics more akin to mammals than to organisms capable of a sexual reproduction. But it does provide an explanation for the rapid population growth of goblins, which is something the first theory struggles with. Lastly, we considered the idea that goblins reproduce through magic. 
This theory, while the most fantastical, can't be dismissed entirely given the magical context of the Goblin Slayer world. It could potentially explain both the rapid population growth and the seemingly overnight appearances of new goblin nests. Yet, it lacks concrete evidence within the series itself. In my personal opinion, while each theory has its strengths and weaknesses, the magic theory seems the most plausible within the context of the Goblin Slayer universe. However, it's important to remember that the beauty of fantasy lies in its ability to bend and break the rules of reality, opening up a universe of possibilities. No matter which theory you believe, the mystery of goblin reproduction adds a fascinating layer to the world of Goblin Slayer. Keep theorizing, and remember, the world of fantasy is full of endless possibilities. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the enigmatic world of Goblin Slayer. Your curiosity and passion for anime lore make this exploration all the more exciting. If you enjoyed this deep dive and crave to learn more about the lore behind your favorite anime, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. By subscribing to Anime Lore Unveiled, you'll be the first to know when we release our next video. You'll also become a part of a community that shares your passion for anime and its fascinating lore. We've got plenty more theories to discuss, worlds to explore, and mysteries to uncover. So stay tuned, keep theorizing, and remember, the world of anime is full of endless possibilities. Subscribe now and never miss a lore-filled adventure.